Hey guys, my name is Morgan and today we'll be discussing isoelectric point and finding the isoelectric point of amino acids and peptides. So what is the isoelectric point? This is going to be the pH at which a molecule has a net charge of zero. And our equation is going to be pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by 2. Next we have ionizable group. These are going to be groups that can donate slash accept protons. And lastly we have pKa. And pKa values are pretty much going to tell us the strength of an acid. And every ionizable group is going to have a corresponding pKa value with it. So before we actually look at amino acids and peptide chains, I'm going to give you guys a generic situation so you can kind of see what's going on. So say we have a generic molecule with an ionizable group attached to it. So we will use a carboxyl group. and we'll have it to be protonated. Okay, so say our pKa of this ionizable group is going to be two. And our pH, which will be various set of conditions, we'll say it's gonna be 0 0.5. Okay, so at a very, very low pH, our molecule is going to be in this protonated form. Now in order to raise the pH, we need to add parts of hydroxide ions. So as we're adding hydroxide ions, and once we pass a pH of 2, this proton is going to pop off. And that will be in a deprotonated form. So essentially, when our pH is lower than our pKa, our ionizable group is going to be in a protonated form. And when our pH is higher than our pKa, it's going to be in its deprotonated form. Okay, so now let's look at histidine and amino acid. This is a neutral form of histidine, and histidine has three ionizable groups. So we see one here being the carboxyl group associated with the alpha carbon, another being the amino group associated with the alpha carbon, and then we have an ionizable group in the side chain of the amino acid um, at this nitrogen. So these are the pKa values associated with these ionizable groups. So pKa's typically around the one to two range are gonna be associated with the carboxyl group of the alpha carbon. PKAs around the 8 to 9 range are going to be associated with the amino group of the alpha carbon. And then the 6 we have left is going to be the ionizable group of the side chain. So first we're going to want to have our molecule in a completely protonated form. So say we just drop it in a really acidic solution and it becomes completely protonated. So we add a hydrogen there and then we'll have a hydrogen here, and this would be a plus charge. So our molecule went from being in a neutral charge to about a plus two charge. And we'll write that here. And we're gonna write all the charges that we'll see um, as we're increasing the pH until we get past zero. So we have a plus two charge, we'll see a plus one charge, a zero charge, and a negative charge. <clears throat> so, our first pKa value that we have is going to be 1.82. So as we're adding parts of hydroxide ions, the first pH that we're going to pass is going to be 1.82. And once we pass it, this carboxyl group will lose this proton and it will be negative. And now we'll be at a plus one charge. So we'll write 1.82 between the plus two charge and the plus one charge. And we'll cross this out. Okay. So we keep adding hydroxide ions to our solution to get it to be more basic. The next pH we'll reach is going to be 6. So we'll write 6 here. And again, that's associated with this nitrogen group. <clears throat> so that hydrogen will pop off. And now we'll be left with a zero charge. Now the last pH that we're going to see um, will be past 9.17. And again, this is going to be associated with the amino group at the alpha carbon. So it'll lose a hydrogen, there'll be no charge there, and now we have a negative one charge. 
Now, the equation for finding the isoelectric point, again, is going to be pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by 2. And the pKa's that we're going to want to look at are the ones directly before and after our zero charge. So our pi is going to be equal to 6 plus 9.17 divided by 2, and that will give us 7.58. Okay, so now it's time for you guys to try. So here we have an amino acid arginine. And here are the associated pKa values with it. So pause the video for a few minutes, try and work it out, and then we'll solve it together. Okay, so here we have arginine in its neutral form. So if we drop it in extremely acidic conditions, it's going to be completely protonated. So we want it to be in its completely protonated form. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Add a hydrogen there, and then we're going to add a hydrogen here, and that's going to gain a plus charge. So now our molecule has an overall charge of plus 2. And again, we're going to write all the charges that we're going to see past 0. So plus 2, plus 1, 0, negative 1. Okay, so now we're going to look at the pKa values. So if we're at very, very low um, acidic conditions and we add parts of hydroxide ions, the first pKa that we're going to touch is 2.17. So once we get past 2.17, this carboxyl group is going to lose its hydrogen. It's going to be a negative charge. And now we're at a overall um, charge of plus 1. Then the next pKa value that will pass will be 9.04. And that's going to be associated with the amino group at the alpha carbon. So we're going to lose this hydrogen, the molecule is neutral, and we'll be at a zero charge. And our last pKa value that we have is going to be 12.48, and that's going to be associated with this ionizable group and the side chain of this amino acid. So 12.48, this hydrogen pops off, and now we're at a charge of negative 1. So we're going to take our pKa values above and below 0 and average them out. So 9.04 plus 12.48 divided by 2 is going to give us 10.76. And this is our isoelectric point. So now we're going to look at finding the isoelectric point for peptide chains. This process is going to be very similar to that of finding the isoelectric point of amino acids. However, there is one major difference. So pretty much, those carboxyl and amino groups, once at the alpha carbon, how they were ionizable before, they won't be in peptide chains because that now they're within peptide bonds. However, the amino at the N terminus and the carboxyl at the C terminus will be available to ionize because they won't be within peptide bonds. So essentially, I can rewrite this chain with alanine, and the amino group at the alpha carbon of alanine will be available because it's at the end. And I'll just write it already in this protein form. And then what I'm writing now this X is going to represent the fact that alanine does not have an ionizable side chain. So then we'll write glutamate. Glutamate does have an ionizable side chain and carboxyl group. And um, again, its alpha carbon, amino, and carboxyl groups are going to be within the peptide bonds. Glycine won't have an ionizable side chain. Lysine well of an amino group. And then because this is the C terminus, the carboxyl group at the alpha carbon of lysine is going to be available to ionize. Okay, so now we have our peptide chain written out with all the side chains associated with it. So now we look at the overall charge. 
But we see if we have a plus charge here and a plus charge here. So that'll give us a plus two charge. And we're gonna write all the charges again that we'll see up to negative one. Okay, so I have all the pKa values associated with these amino acids written down here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna eliminate some of these pKa values because they're gonna be associated with the groups within the peptide bonds. So if you look at alanine, we have a 2.34 and a 9.69. If we remember, 9.69 or any range between like eight and nine, it's gonna to refer to the amino group at the alpha carbon. So we're gonna leave that alone because that's free to ionize. However, the 2.34 referring to the carboxyl group at the alpha carbon is now within a peptide bond. So we're gonna cross it out. Then same thing with glutamate. We have a 2.17 and a 9.67. Those are now within peptide bonds, so we're going to cross those out. And the 4.25 is going to refer to the um, ionizable group in its side chain. So we're going to leave that alone. So glycine, the 2.34 is a carboxyl group in a peptide chain, in a peptide bond, 9.6 cross out as well. And then we have lysine. So the um, 2.18 is going to refer to the carboxyl group at the alpha carbon of lysine. So we're going to leave that alone because it's free to ionize. The 8.95 is referring to the amino group. It's now within a peptide bond. Cross it out. And the 10.53 is going to refer to the ionizable amino side chain group. So now that we have all our values crossed out, now we can go ahead and solve the pi point. So we're going to look at the lowest um, pH value that we'll reach first. And this is going to be 2.18. And this 2.18 is again going to be associated with this carboxyl group at the alpha carbon of lysine. So we're going to pop off that proton and put a negative charge, and now we're at plus one. Okay, so our next pKa, next highest pKa value is going to be 4.25. 4.25. And this is going to be associated with the carboxyl group on the side chain of glutamate. So get rid of this proton and now we're at a charge of zero. And then our next highest pKa is going to be 9.69. So 9.69, and that's going to be referring to the amino at the alpha carbon of alanine. So take a proton away from here, and we're left at a negative one charge. So again, with our equation, we'll take the pKa values directly above and below zero and average them out. So 4.25 plus 9.69 divided by 2 will give us 6.97. And that's our isoelectric point. Okay, so now it's your turn to try. So here I have a simple peptide chain of histidine, alanine, glutamate, tyrosine, and aspartate. And I have all the corresponding pKa values associated with them. So again, just pause the video for a few minutes, try and work it out, and then come back and we'll work it out together. Okay, so rather than rewriting this molecule, I'm just going to jump right into the pKa values. So if we start at histidine, histidine is going to be on the N-terminus side of this peptide chain, so we know that its amino group is going to be free to ionize. So this 9.66, when protonated, it's going to give us a plus charge. So I'll just write a plus up here. The 6.02 is going to be referring to the side chain of histidine, and when protonated, it will give us a plus charge as well. And the 2.44 is going to be referring to the carboxyl that's now within a peptide bond. So we'll cross it out. Alanine, these are both in peptide bonds, so we'll cross it out. Glutamate, cross out these two. And the 4.21 is going to be referring to the ionizable side chain, and when protonated, it will give us a neutral charge. Tyrosine, we'll cross these out. And aspartate, because it's at the C terminus, its alpha carbon carboxyl group will be free to um, ionize, so the 1.84 will leave alone. The 3.97 is referring to its side chain ionizable group, and when protonated, it will give us a neutral charge. And the 9.83 is the amino group at the alpha carbon of aspartate, and is now within a peptide bond, so we'll cross it out. So now we have all of the pKa values that we don't need crossed out. We have our overall charge of plus two, and we can solve the problem. So 
plus two, plus one, zero, negative one. So our lowest pKa value will be 1.84. And when that carboxyl group is deprotonated, we're at a charge of plus one. Our next highest is 3.97. Now we're at a charge of zero, and our next highest is 4.21 of glutamate, and now we're at a charge of negative one. So again, taking our pKa value directly before and after zero, and averaging those out. We'll get a value of 4.09, and that's going to be our isoelectric point. So that concludes this video. I hope it was very helpful and good luck. The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.